Tourism is a travel for pleasure or business. Also, the theory and practice of touring, the business of attracting, accommodating, and entertaining tourists, and the business of operating tours. Tourism may be international or within the traveler's country. It can be domestic or international, and international tourism has both incoming and outgoing implications on the country's balance of payment. Today's tourism is a major source of income for many, many countries. And affects the economy of both the SAS and host countries, in some cases being of vital importance. Sierra Leone is endowed and filled with rich touristic areas and we've got a rich, beautiful and amazing culture. To explore and get to know more about our touristic areas and our culture, join me every Friday at 3 to 4 p.m. on Star Television Network on Channel 21 for the program Tourism and culture and a repeat broadcast on Sunday at 3 to 4 p.m. Don't miss out on tourism and culture with me, Adam Astilla, right here on Star Television Network on Channel 21. Hello, viewers. It's a pleasant welcome to another edition of Tourism and Culture here on Star Television Network on Channel 21. As you know, Tourism and Culture is a program that basically looks at our tourism sector in Sierra Leone and also that of our cultural aspect you know we have a beautiful culture in Sierra Leone and we like to portray what we have in our modern land and in the midst of all of this we like to talk to people who um, have been engaging in some cultural um, things to further boost our cultural aspects and that of our tourism sector in the country and to see where our lapses are what and what we need to improve on and in today's edition of tourism and culture we have with us a special guest well, some people know this person, and uh, for me, I think he's been very instrumental when it comes to showcasing our culture, upholding the things that keeps us together as a, as a nation, and even um, as a way of ensuring that people don't forget what are our norms, what are our customs, what are our traditions, and things that bind us together as a people. And he's not as a person, but Yusuf Jalo. And any moment from now, we shall start to talk to him. But please be reminded that um, if you happen to miss any part of this program, you can always log us on YouTube, Adam Asila on YouTube, and you can catch up with what's happening. It's Tourism and Culture that comes up every Friday at 3 to 4 p.m. on Star Television Network on Channel 21. Stay tuned. Tourism is a travel for pleasure or business. Also, the theory and practice of touring, the business of attracting, accommodating, and entertaining tourists, and the business of operating tours. Tourism may be international or within the traveler's country. It can be domestic or international, and international tourism has both incoming and outgoing implications on the country's balance of payment. Today's tourism is a major source of income for many, many countries, and affects the economy of both the SAS and host countries, in some cases being of vital importance. Sierra Leone is endowed and filled with rich touristic areas and we've got a rich, beautiful and amazing culture. To explore and get to know more about our touristic areas and our culture, join me every Friday at 3 to 4 p.m. on Star Television Network on Channel 21 for the program Tourism and culture and a repeat broadcast on Sunday at 3 to 4 p.m. Don't miss out on tourism and culture with me, Adam Astilla, right here on Star Television Network on Channel 21. Welcome back, viewers, to Tourism and Culture here on Star Television Network on Channel 21. Like I mentioned earlier, we have with us in today's edition of our program, Yusuf Jalo. He is the Kalko Prince. <laughs> Yusuf, welcome to Tourism and Culture and Star TV. Now, tell us, who is Yusuf Jalo? Who is the Kalpo Prince? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I am, I, I am just someone who is just passionate about my identity as an African. I'm passionate about my culture. I'm pas passionate about, um, I'm passionate about inspiring young people. Um, you know, so I'm a storyteller, I am an actor, I'm a motivator, I am an architect for social change and cultural awakening, um, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an educator, but to do with, you know, our cultural art forms. Mm -hmm. right. Now, you made mention of storytelling, you know, 
what interests you in telling stories? Where did you um, get that passion from? Like, I want to tell stories. What's a creative aspect of that? Well, I mean, I've always loved stories uh, as, as a kid. Since you were a kid. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and I think every every African person in general can relate to that, mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 we've always loved stories. But you know, when you go to Europe, you find many children who would read a lot of books, from Cinderella to you know um, Jack and the Beanstalk, mm -hmm. um, Beauty and the Beast. All these magical stories inspire people. For us in Sierra Leone, it's Bra Spider, Bra Kondo, um, you know, and, <laughs> and, and all, you know, Rakoni Ravit, uh, Ratoto, all these stories inspire, um, inspire us. So I do think that for me, the interest in storytelling is only very, very natural. All right. Now, when you talk about storytelling, this is something that has been there for years. Um, in Sierra Leone, this is what we're even known for in an African culture and an African setting, mm -hmm. you know, and it of all sorts of people, these are norms, these are customs, you know, you go to villages, you see um, when the moon is bright and it's shining, you see people sit down to tell stories, it's just a way of maintaining our culture. Now, as one person that finds some kind of an excitement mm -hmm. in this, um, where do you see this going? in this century, where do you see this going in present, in terms of people really believing in this, people really maintaining that culture of storytelling? One thing is, is, um, is for sure, that the success or failure of every person, nation, community, is entirely dependent on the narrative that you perceive, that you conceive, mm -hmm. that you believe, um, that you accept. And eventually act upon so um, storytelling is not only about the traditional folklore about bra spider bra monkey or bra rabbit but we need to understand that these stories are metaphors they are mirrors that reflect and show us images of our society so um, so for as long as we have a society, a civilization, a community, these stories would always be relevant. And now, more now than ever before, um, these stories are so pertinent. Um, you know, of course, now we're in the modern day with it, with technologies to do, you know, whether it's WhatsApp, whether it is Facebook, and so on, and YouTube. We have all these wonderful modern technologies now that are giving us tons and tons and tons and tons of stories, you know, all the time. Um, but we cannot underestimate the power of the traditional folklore. You see, that's the beginning. You peel that off, it's like digging the root off from a plant. Eventually, the plant will die. It, 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 it will have no sustenance. Right, but, you, but you see this like really going on in Syria, where people are passionate about maintaining that culture of storytelling. And... Um, you know, trying to even pass, on, pass it on to their kids, like yes. tell them like, in the evening, come and sit, let's tell stories. You know, and transforming messages into stories for them to better adapt it to their lives and see how it, could, it can impact their lives. Now, now, that's a very important thing you just mentioned there. Mm -hmm. You see, because many times, the way people talk of storytelling, they talk of, ah, now for Pekin, I can't sit down. You mm -hmm. see? No. That's a widely perceived view. Yes, that's a widely perceived view. But storytelling is more about the papa, the granny, the auntie, the uncle, about all man. Storytelling is not just about, um, just for children. And, and so we have to begin to understand that um, um, these stories are, uh, have contemporary relevance. In other words, all this to it there, so I hope you don't mind me because I'll, I'll okay, go into okay. Pinoa, so. we can, we can okay. do it like that. <laughs> because um, the story they're all important for making them be relevant, let yeah. them be necessary to the current present situation where we did in Sierra Leone. It gives a better understanding, a clear picture of everything. Precisely. All right. Yes. But what do you think we're actually getting it wrong? What went wrong? Somebody might want to ask, okay, you're so passionate about this, you have outlined its importance and why we need to inculcate it in our daily lives, not only for kids, but even for adults themselves. Mm -hmm. But what went wrong? What went wrong? I, I'm, I'm going to use a big English word here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you can break uh, it down to <laughs> you. <laughs> right. Um, what went wrong is ideological subversion. 
now now a slow process than the ideological subversion we say you perception we perception of reality we perception of what is important to we mm -hmm. is so misguided that even with facts and information where we get we still incapable of making decisions in the interest of we self for we self for we picking for we family we community and we country so in practical terms it simply mean for example that in we primary schools them we not teach we languages then they right across from nursery right across to the time you finish primary school and I need to go to I need to go to secondary school to university even <laughs> why not but we, before when we were the flag picking in our school <laughs> the children's backsides yeah. because they don't learn French I went to Prince of Wales and in Prince of Wales at that time our uniform our blazer our bota everything books was all imported from England mm. therefore psychologically it means that every sense of grandeur is not from within it is from without yeah. so we read all the stories of Jack and the Beanstalk and um, and and, uh, and 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 Cinderella and we read all of these but we never were looking into Brakundu and Brakomiel and all these other limba stories that we have up, up country what do you, what, Yusuf, now these are very important areas you've just outlined and mm -hmm. when you take a, an in-depth look, look at the whole situation you might want to wonder where are we as a nation in continuously setting up our minds to mm -hmm. maintain our customs our traditions our norms and you know hold it into high esteem mm -hmm. more than how we do for other countries mm -hmm. and like what you've just made with regards to school prince of Wales. Yeah. so like the force you to accept that you have to value this then where are we presently as a nation in maintaining i think I think we need to start, I always say we need to start three generations deep. That's a long one. Yes, it's a long <laughs> one because we have spent 50 something years and probably over 60, 70 years. And there is if a possibility I of include, getting there. Well, that's, there is a possibility of getting there. Um, you see, this, when, I talked about, when I talk about ideological subversion, I have not even gone into, um, into the colonial times the kind of ideology that was given to us there was that everything european is better than everything african, african. <laughs> now um so when we used to talk of baibure we would talk of baibure as he was a warrior who fought against the british and the british made him su surrender a kotomaimu baibure was the first west african nationalist leader he was the first man who stood up for our own identity he stood up and fought and I dare say died for us. He was exiled for so many years. We do not even have a day that we say this is by Bure Day. Yet we have a day to celebrate all many others Can who are imagine? not of this country, who do not have no interest, never known us. They know of our DNA, but we have days to celebrate them here. Yet we don't have a day to celebrate by Bure. We don't have a date to celebrate Madame Yoko. We don't have a date to, to celebrate um 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 the first female uh, uh, parliamentarian, uh, her name, uh, 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 Madam. Oh, does anybody here know in the crew? Um, oh, Koblo. Anyway, Gulama, exactly. Yes, we don't have a day to celebrate a woman like that. You understand me? Um, and there's many more. Senbe Pierre, we don't have a day to celebrate all these heroes that are ours. If we don't have them, we don't have days for them, what else do we really have? Now, we don't because. Everything of grandeur for us is from without. So it's when you wear a suit and a tie that you are respected or you seem important. It's when you wear, um, you know, it's when you're driving a Pajero or whatever it is they say you are, you are highly respected. It's when you study whatever kind of courses they say you are respected. But we have so much of our own here that we do need to begin to look at. Indeed, if you do not live within, you will live without. And how do we start reviving? three generations down first i would suggest we need to introduce our languages to all the primary schools from class one to class whatever it is in the primary school let them learn all the languages in our country at least let them learn kushe 
how you do, um, how I eat, how the body, that's where you start. Because every culture is enshrined in the languages. Mm -hmm. You lose the language, you lose the culture. So, we want to get our children to begin to appreciate the Mende, the Kuranko, the Gizi, the Yalonka, the Bambara, and all these different um, uh, um, um, cultures. We need to introduce them to the languages. With your wealth of experience in all of this, you know, Yusuf, who do we start to target? If one might want to say, all right, I'm at my only two corner now. I've heard Yusuf Jalo um, elaborated extensively on the need for us to pull their customs and culture into higher esteem. But where do we start? Who do we start with? Or what institutions that need to be strengthened to further help boost the cultural aspect and that of the tourism? That we know the Ministry of Tourism. Of course, yes. Um, I mean, uh, the Ministry of Tourism is uh, incredibly um, in important uh, ministry mm -hmm. for Sierra Leone. Um, but again, I will go back to say the schools are important. This is not a quick fix. This is a system, what we are experiencing now has been set up over 70, 80, 90 years ago mm. from times of colonialism. You see what I'm saying? Mm. This is why I talk about ideological subversion, where our perception of reality of ourselves has been changed. You remember? Mm. Now I look at you, beautiful dark skin, rich melanin. Mm. But why do a lot of our sisters and our brothers Sorry. bleach the skin? Mm. It's ideological subversion because they think that everything else was right. Mm. What was in the beginning was blackness. What's at the end? Blackness, the alpha and the omega. Every other color is in between blackness. Now, that's me taking it a little bit further down there. But all I'm trying to express here is when the mind has been subverted to not appreciate itself, then game over. And this has been started many, many years ago. Now we need to start again. That's why I say three generations deep. And it has to be consistent. Thomas Sankara, he came, changed the name from Upper Volta to Burkina Faso. And in three years, he turned Burkina Faso around to appreciate its, its heritage. Most importantly, to appreciate its women, its African women. You want to truly make a big change in terms of culture and appreciating culture, invest in the women. Exactly. That's, that's you see? amazing. Okay, now, Yusuf, what, what has been your own intervention? Um, we know you've been engaging in lots of activities. Yeah. And we, we see how passionate you're about this. You're pushing it, and one of which is the kite round. Yes. You know, I was present and I saw how people actually own this. It used to see people are actually missing something. Before this time, you used to see kids when it's weekends, they get excited knowing that they're going to fly kites, you know, they're going to play funny games mm -hmm. on the ground and things like that. But now we, we're in the new age or new media things and WhatsApp. always WhatsApp. <laughs> you see kids, kids five years old, concentrate on WhatsApp. Instead of um, Nakuyo, we go to say Adai, yes. Church, Adai, Church, Church and, Bologi, Bushkidi, Skitero. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> now don't see us with the Sabi. Oh, small, 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 small. Yeah. But now you see kids, yeah. all they care about is WhatsApp, it's about mm. Facebook, yeah. you know how to give the latest post. Yeah. And they'll tell you, mommy, post it on social media. Right. So what have you been doing? You wow, I mean... <laughs> I hear I am, um, you know, on Facebook Live right now. So the social media has been, a, it's been, a, it's been a blessing and a curse at the same time. Yeah. Um, but it's all how we use it. I think, I think it's a very powerful tool. But we need to know how to use it. We can't be using the social media these days just to, uh, you know, just to cause each other's mummy or just to kungusa <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. You understand? But. It's a very important tool. We've seen in the in our general elections how the social media played people to role. You see, mm. it really played. So it's there, and we can use it very well. However, um, um, we could use it to promote Adai. Um, one of the things I'm actually um, looking at right now to do is um, two things. Number one, I'm going to be launching hand tennis tournament, mm. and number two. Um, I'm going to be launching an all-girls drumming ensemble. I'm going to call it Mambena Girls Drumming Ensemble. Wow. So, 
it's there for us and we can use social media to promote all of these things you see me i mean india is doing it um china is doing it america is doing it we're doing all of this so why why shouldn't we so i think that i think that it's important very very important that we learn how to use every tool that's been access to us why not play the other day um i saw on um on again on social media mm. in india touch being played in india yes being like the touch played, we used to play here like exactly the touch <laughs> we used to play here they're playing it professionally wearing vests like footballers would wear their own uniforms they're wearing it and they're playing you understand yeah. me mm -hmm. so if we're going to maintain sustain any aspect of our cultures um we would need to learn, we need to be savvy in how we use these social media. Um, but also these games are important in schools. Look, play is a whole subject um, to be taught. And play is a very important instrument, if I may say, to help our children grow and become better. You see, mm -hmm. but we just when we see our children, you say, "This not like play play today, but like come on, not right." You see, <laughs> but it's essential. Mm -hmm. It's essential for the growth of our children. Mm -hmm. They learn to communicate with each other. They learn tolerance with each other. Um, they they it, because it's a small society, and they begin to grow with that and learn. And it is from that that they get to be adults. And do not mistake that what they've learned from childhood, that it's not carried on to adulthood. It's carried on to adulthood. So therefore, as adults, we need to begin to look at how we supervise the play and see how best can we um, um, improve on the play that the children um, are doing, whether it's balance ball um, and so, uh, you know, and all this stuff. I think, I think... We've been, we've been engaging young people. Yes. And um, we've been massively engaging them. And, yes. Um, of the university students actually targeting. What has been your what Well, I, I, with what that, mm -hmm. what I'm doing, because um, university level is important, because yeah. I need those younger generation <laughs> who will pass the knowledge over to the younger ones. So, Patriotic Advocacy Network had been pivotal in this. Um, they are, as far as I'm concerned, by far the most efficient um, group of young people I've ever come across so far. Mm -hmm. um, they're solid. They are the patriotic, they're passionate about their country and, and, are, and are putting programs together to always engage young people in patriotism. Um, one of the programs we did was one on environmental issues, uh, 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 My Environment and Me, we did last year for the storytelling and something which we are going to continue. Um, uh, and the National Kite Flying Day that you attended was also together with Patriotic Advocacy Network. You see, it must so, be continuous. It's going to continue. I mean, this year we've not done it partly because of the uncertainty with the election. Mm -hmm. Even um, my own festival, Mambina Fest, I have had to uh, postpone it to next year. It didn't happen this year. It should have been happening this weekend. Mm -hmm. But it's not happening again because we were worried about issues with the election. Um, and I pray this never happens again, that in the next five years, our political leaders sort this nonsense out. Because <laughs> businesses should not mm -hmm. stop because we're having a general election. It reflects on the, on the I dare say, backward mindset. And, and it just affects the economy negatively. You understand? Tourists will not come. We're sitting here in Takugama, one of the most beautiful places in Freetown. In fact, I would dare say the most beautiful place in Freetown. Um, this place should be heaving, thriving with tourists. Look at all the birds you, you're listening to, you understand? The chimpanzees are over there, they'll make noise. It's cool, it's calm, it's beautiful. This place should be thriving. But unless we create the kind of atmosphere mm -hmm. to attract people to come. So to me, if you ask me the things that I'm engaging, is engaging in activities, in communicating, um, uh, in communicating about areas mm -hmm. like Takugama, mm -hmm areas like, um, or, or young people like Patriotic Advocacy Network, that we have people like this that you can trust, institutions like those you can trust, places where you can come and really enjoy what Sierra Leone is Have you ever tried to figure out, like, um, to what extent what you're doing is creating an impact in the lives of people? You know, have you ever tried to, to look at that area? Yes, I think that, um, I think that, um, I, everything I do, I sit back and reflect upon it and evaluate the impact it's having on young people. Um, you see, where I am right now, 
I'm, I'm at the age where my interest is to invest in the young people now. Pass my knowledge, my experiences to them so that they don't make the same mistakes that um, I have made or the elders have made before me. So um, I teach them about our cultures. I teach them about aspects that they may not have appreciated before. And I've seen the change. I've seen many young people now who are interested in storytelling. Mm -hmm. When I go to Kamakwe, I see the amount of young people who gather to come and tell stories. But I also see the older people now who are coming in to do storytelling. I we were in Kamakwe just over a week ago, um, doing a storytelling night. And my goodness, where the women came from to yeah. tell stories. <laughs> there was a lady who just came in. She literally just burst into the scene to mm. tell a story. Everybody was like, you know, just taken aback. But she was right there. The impact is there. I see the children, their, their eyes light up because their imagination mm. just goes. Um, it becomes unlimited. Um, I see it here in Freetown. I see the young people who meet me everywhere and say, what you're doing is so good. I see young people who are asking me, how can I be a good storyteller? And I think all of these... Now, now Yusuf, um, when we talk about the aspect of storytelling, me, um, for one, I think it's very important to yes. that people can be able to communicate what they feel. Yes. If we are to address so many of our societal issues we've been faced with, mm -hmm. I think these are forms by which we can um, address them, like people gather together yeah. and talk about those issues mm -hmm. in the form of story, yes. you know, bring out their grief and their grievances, and they get, we get to capture them, Yes, you know, and further send out the message. These are all creative ways of solving societal problems, you know, but how do we get it down here in Freedom, like for it to be, what can I say, it's a normal festival, like people might come from Makinibo, Kenma, before we get into other countries, we need to start it here first. Charity things like, at home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> People come from Makini, Kenema, Bo. Like, I'm coming to tell a festival of storytelling, mm -hmm. or a drama, or plays, where people talk about issues. Yes. Like, act on it, you know. Like, we had the... Um, what's the name of this guy? Charlie Afna. Um, yes, Charlie Afna, with Freetown like, Players. Like, what they used yes. to do. Yes. So how do we make it a, 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 a normal festival? Well, it's um. Yes, I think I think we're getting there, and I think Mambina Fest in Kamakwe is is leading the way in this. Um, I know Charlie Afna has got Tanges, which is happening at the stadium, and that's also very good. We've also got Madeng, which also been been happening here, um, and, and these are all important, you know, strands mm. to make this thing all come alive. I even did storytelling here in Takugama um, um, one night and I know that uh, Bala, who is the director for here, is also organizing that they have storytelling nights here wow. in Takugama. <laughs> so yeah, and, and it's beautiful to be out in this surrounding at night mm -hmm. and lights everywhere and there's a place somewhere right over there where, you know, it's a nice platform to just sit down and just do storytelling and guest coming and so on. I'm also um, building a place in Kamakwe, which is an eco village as well, to make sure people will come to Kamakwe as tourists, as anybody you just want to visit, you can come there and you can sit in huts and so on, similar like we have here in, in Takugama here. Sit down and listen to stories being told with fire lit up and enjoy storytelling. So these are coming and I am seriously determined for this to, um, to, to happen big time. Um, Mambina Fest, you know, has a storytelling side to it mm -hmm. and is revamping, at least for now, the Limba culture. I'm going to still bring in the Mende culture all within there. But we also have National Storytelling Festival, mm -hmm. which has been happening two years now at the British Council, then at Miata Conference Centre. Um, it happened last year, December. So there are things that we're piecing together. Mm -hmm. And Star TV, I know, has been very pivotal um, in helping <laughs> us to, to promote it. Um, but I also do think that um, we need to take it into the media. Mm -hmm. We need to have storytelling regularly on television, um, as much as on radio, because radio goes by far Like a Tudai, and uh, we like used to have... Like a yes. I believe the young people are our roots. For many, many decades, they have not been valued. And the proof of that is in the education system that we've left, that has been left to just to rotten <laughs> yeah for a big college is one place not to mention many of the other schools and inst education institutions that our young people have been going through 
it may just be left to rot. So a lot of young people grow up without a proper sense of value, that they are so valuable and that their opinions matter, that they can contribute sensibly. Everybody talks of the young man um, who made the radio. Um, I don't know why his name um, comes off my head all the time. Um, he takes bits and pieces from the bin and he managed to make this radio station. Um, oh, um, Kelvin, Kelvin. Kelvin. Kelvin, Kelvin Doe. Oh, Kelvin Doe, the young man. The young okay. man, Kelvin Doe. Okay? Everybody talks about Kelvin Doe and, uh, and that's, you know, he's, uh, he's done so well and so on. That's one out of God knows how many other millions of young Can people. Right. So, there has to be a very proactive policy in place to get the young people to understand and appreciate and feel valued. You see, leave Freetown. Freetown has its own hustle with the young people. But go up country. And you see the apathy that set in with so many young people. And worse of it, the girls. Um, drunkenness. Serious alcoholism is a big challenge for many young people up country. You see? Um, and, it, and it doesn't, you know, and, 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 and Cheap alcohol is sold to them, 46%. So if we're going to get our young people to really begin to contribute, these are some of the things we need to really get them away from. But by showing them that they're valuable, you see, we give them a tough life when they're young. Great. But there's no reward at the end. There's nothing at the end for them to say, this tough life I'm going through, the reward I'm going to get is a great job, is, is an opportunity to start a great business, is an opportunity to, um, to, to excel in my life. There's nothing like that in the, in, um, in, in the future. If it's there, it's so scanty, it's so tiny, it's hard to see. Our young people have got to be able to encourage you to have this kind of vision. Ask any university student up at Furabe College there or at Injala, ask them what's their plans for the next five years. They don't even have a plan for the next two months before I say for the next five years. Mm, so we have got to be able to set up, and set up a, um, 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 entities in place that begin to inspire our, inspire our young people to have vision. Again, to not to be afraid to dream. You see, they say, where snake bet you want them, where see what wrong you the wrong. Too many snakes have bitten many of our young people over the years that they lack the trust now to say, I can dream and dare to dream that I will achieve because they don't see what is in place for them. Where are the manufacturing industries here? Where are the where are the um, where are the the regulations or the laws or the institutions that are encouraging young artists, whether they're singers, whether they are whether they are visual artists, where are they? You see, all of these things need to be in place. Um, where are the things to set up for the new scientists? Where are the things to set up for the new ones who are coming up in the medical field so that they, they know they can, um, they can investigate this, that, and the other and come up with new cures? Where are those that are encouraging us to understand the, the use of our herbs? If you ask anybody, what's the nutritional value of cassava leaves? They cannot tell you. We don't even know the nutritional value of granites. We've got to begin to encourage our young people to dig deep into all of this. You see, that's the roots. If we don't fertilize that, if we don't feed that with rich, nourishing stories or information, they are not going to grow and bear productive fruits. They're not going to grow. This is the challenge we're facing. So um, what's the future for the young people? Yes, it's all of us. It's those in the diaspora and it is the, the um, government ministries that, that needs to pass the necessary reg regulations so that these young people can say, I can stand up proud and say, any tourist can come to Sierra Leone and we will give you a spectacular experience in Sierra Leone like no other. Wow. Let me show you something here. Go to, um, go to Radisson Blue. Go to Mamiyoko. Go to Bintumani. Go to any of the top hotels you care to think about in Freetown. Go into the reception and tell them you want to book a room. 
you're a guest coming in, you want to book a room. See if they'll give you refreshments just to welcome you. I've just come from Egypt. I went there researching stories and so on. And I spent my time in hotels and then cruise ships, cruise ships on the Nile, on the river Nile. Four story cruise ship with swimming pool. Me, I sat in them comfortably and there are people coming, <laughs> please sir, yes sir. And they come in to give to me. As soon as I got there, the very first thing they gave me for refreshment, shakpa, what we call sorrel, or what some people call bisap. They gave that to me. Mr. Yusuf, please, here, refresh yourself. And then the smoke the Right. We want to attract tourists. We're going to have to adapt all of this. Go to Radis, go to any of these hotels. They don't even have ginger beer. <laughs> What about granite cake? What about Benny cake? Can you imagine the industry that will create? How many young people will be inspired to say, I'll make my Benny cake, brand it very nicely, so when they come to sit down and um, any guest come, I'm supplying them granite cake, we're supplying them Benny cake. What about Mampama? Right, here in Takugama, if you come here, they'll give you Benny cake, they'll give you ginger beer to drink. Here. And for me, this is why I enjoy coming. This is why I love coming here. You understand me? Remember what I said earlier on. Our sense of grandeur is from without. It is not from within. And indeed, if you do not live within, you will live without. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's a pleasure talking to you, the cowpoke you. prince, while he is the cowpoke prince. Why the cult book prince finally be father? You work? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say the cult book prince. Because we might be wondering, what's cult book prince? Is it the cult book or the market? <laughs> well, the idea of the cult book it relates to everything we've been talking about. I'm a fuller, um, at least a quarter fuller. But as a fuller, fullers are synonymous to what? Cows. <laughs> and the cow foot, the feet, is grounded. It's grounded on culture. Fuller people are proud of their culture and their heritage. Mm -hmm. So cow food start to be grounded, to be who you are also about your talents, your gifts, to be grounded with that. But further as well, cow food prince, when you're grounded with who you are, with your talent, with your culture and everything, you become successful, a prince. As our people say, know yourself, not a cause. <laughs> A good advice. Thank you so much, Mr. Bagani. It's, it's, it's a pleasure having you in tourism and culture here on Star TV. Of course, we hope to have you subsequent edition of our programs. We know you're coming up with a lot of creative ideas. You have so much going on right now. And we tend to follow up just to um, further enlighten a younger generation of the importance of maintaining our culture and to raise more awareness that can even extend to the Ministry of Tourism and Cultural Affairs for them to know that this and this and this are the things you need to pay more attention to. We want to raise more and more public awareness. So thank you so much for being part of the program. And I guess our viewers have learned a lot from you. <laughs> I myself have learned a lot from you um, in this edition of the program. And um, please be reminded that it's Tourism and Culture here on Star TV. And it comes up every Friday at 4 to 5 p.m. And we have a repeat broadcast on Sunday at um, 4 to 5 p.m. You can join us for that um, repeat broadcast. Or if you happen to miss this one, you can get us on YouTube at Adam Asila and with a cow food prints, tourism and culture. Um, well, that's our roundup to this edition of the program. We don't want to go. Um, <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> but we have to work with time. I know um, you guys have been enjoying a lot today and you have learned a lot from what the cow footprints has said. But just say fix. We're going to have an, an other edition of a program. He had lots and lots to tell us. This is just one edition. Another edition is going to come up. I just told him that we've um, marked his name in the history books. I'm saying it as one person that's really passionate about promoting our culture. Well, we are still then when the program shall return. I have been your presenter, Adam Asila, saying Tata, you keep watching Star TV and uh, always stay fixed for tourism and culture. Bye bye. <laughs>
Tourism is a travel for pleasure or business. Also, the theory and practice of touring, the business of attracting, accommodating, and entertaining tourists, and the business of operating tours. Tourism may be international or within the traveler's country. It can be domestic or international, and international tourism has both incoming and outgoing implications on the country's balance of payment. Today's tourism is a major source of income for many, many countries and affects the economy of both the South and host countries, in some cases being of vital importance. Sierra Leone is endowed and filled with rich touristic areas and we've got a rich, beautiful and amazing culture. To explore and get to know more about our touristic areas and our culture, join me every Friday at 3 to 4 p.m. on Star Television Network on Channel 21 for the program Tourism and Culture and a repeat broadcast on Sunday at 3 to 4 p.m. Don't miss out on Tourism and Culture with me, Adam Astilla, right here on Star Television Network on Channel 21.